If your thighs are fat, there's actually a cardiometabolic benefit. What is this world that I'm living in? This is so weird. <laughs> There's a study that was published in MedRx that took a look at tens of thousands of people and they found that visceral fat was the only indicator of like risk of death. That is really wild when they compared that to abdominal fat and compared it to thigh fat. Now this wasn't like a clickbait intro, this was legit, this is legit. Okay, so what they found is that abdominal fat when not visceral fat didn't really play a huge, huge role like negatively as far as like cardiometabolic disease and things like that. That doesn't mean that it's not good, right? It's unsightly, like carrying more weight, higher BMI, obviously associated with all kinds of negative things. I'm not saying we need to go out and try to get fat. But the other interesting thing was that thigh fat actually had a potentially like a small positive result when it came down to cardiometabolic effects. Now cardiometabolic things like metabolic disorders, diabetes, things like that, obviously associated with the cardiovascular system and the metabolic system. So when you factor that all together, visceral fat was the only one that had the problem. What's even more wild is when you start looking at the data, there's this thing called a visceral fat to subcutaneous fat ratio. And this is what I really wanna hone in on today. So today's video sponsor is Element Electrolyte. So if you're doing keto, you've gotta try them out. They have a bunch of different flavors. And when you're doing keto, it's just easy to become a lot more deficient in your electrolytes because you excrete more of them because your insulin levels are low. So Element just makes it kind of a tasty way. Now the cool thing is they have awesome flavors. They have all kinds of different, like mango chili, lemon habanero, all kinds of stuff, but now they have a new one called chocolate mint. So if you just want something to sip on throughout the course of the day or in between meals, it is amazing. And right now they have something super cool going on. So in addition to the awesome offer they normally have, which is you can go ahead and get a free sample pack with only paying shipping, like super awesome. Now you can enter three friends emails and shipping addies and they will get three packets of the new chocolate mint. So you basically get to gift it to some friends for the holiday season, which makes it super cool. But it's only for select dates and those dates are down below in the description. So you can get your free trial pack of Element Electrolytes, but then you can also put your friends' names in and they're gonna get a few gifts as well of those trial packs of Element. So check them out down below and try out that chocolate mint and let me know how it is. So there's a study that was published in the journal Obesity that demonstrated that your visceral fat to subcutaneous fat ratio was an independent predictor of your overall like health and cardiometabolic health and even risk of, unfortunately, death. It's pretty wild when you look at that. Now, what does that mean? That means what is your ratio of visceral fat like how much visceral fat do you have in comparison to subcutaneous fat? Now subcutaneous fat is the unsightly jiggly fat that's all over our body. We associate subcutaneous fat with automatically just being like obese and unhealthy. And in a lot of instances it is, but it's usually because it's going alongside other comorbidities, going alongside other things that aren't so good, right? Bad eating, insulin resistance, but it doesn't always mean it, okay? Obesity is not always meaning that someone is unhealthy. In fact, there's a lot of instances where people that are are overweight are really not all that unhealthy when you look at their cardiometabolic drivers and different things. So what is this whole visceral fat ratio thing? Well, what this implies is that believe it or not, someone that is lean on the outside that has high levels of visceral fat is at higher risk than someone that were to have moderate levels of visceral fat and moderate levels of subcutaneous fat. That ratio plays a bigger difference. The leaner someone is on the outside, but the more visceral fat they have on the inside is an indicator that that ratio is so far off that their body is predominantly trying to store fat in the visceral region. Think about what that implies. People think just because they're lean, they're automatically healthy, but think about what it implies if someone has a high level of visceral fat while being lean on the outside. It means that it's like the epitome of like the fitness industry that kind of drives me crazy, even though I'm kind of in the fitness industry, although I don't necessarily consider myself in it. Okay, you can be lean with a six pack, but you can be living such a high stress, dangerous life, manipulating hormones, all kinds of things that you actually can drive your visceral fat levels up high, indicating from cardiometabolic standpoints, you're probably in a better or you're probably in a worse position. And that's something that we really have to pay attention to. So being lean and having a high amount of visceral fat is worse than having a little bit of body fat and moderately high levels of visceral fat. It's all about that ratio. So again, if you think about it, your body is selectively trying to put fat in the visceral region. 
like selectively trying to accumulate more. So if you were to overeat, it's gonna to go to your visceral fat, but not affect the leanness of your arms and your belly. So you really need to focus on doing what I call the grab test. It's very important and it's kind of funny, but if you pinch your skin, if you pinch your belly and you can grab some fat, it's not that bad. If you have a bigger belly, but it's hard and it's like a pot belly, that's where we have to be concerned. Because visceral fat, as I've talked about in many videos, is metabolically active. And if you are continually adding to that visceral fat, then that means that you are continually changing the metabolic effect that is a result of that. So what you need to do is you do need to measure your waist and you should probably consistently measure your waist, maybe once a month or so and see how you go, see how it grows or see how it shrinks, but then simply do the grab test. And again, I've talked about this in other videos. The grab test is gonna tell you if it's subcutaneous fat that you can grab or if your waist is growing, but the grab test hasn't changed. Right? So let's say my waist grew three inches over the last three months, but I can't grab any more fat. It, nothing's changed there. In fact, it actually feels tighter. That's an indicator that you probably have gained some visceral fat. And I have numerous videos that explain kind of the dangers there. That same study that was published in the journal Obesity that I referenced earlier showed that one kilogram of visceral fat mass was equal to 2x the risk of death from 0.5 kilograms of visceral fat mass. So the more visceral fat that you accumulate, the higher the risk of mortality. Okay, this is a very real thing and something that we really need to be looking at. And you can say whatever you want about the whole body image thing that's going on in the world right now. I would much rather that we focus on visceral fat than we do focus on image. Okay, and this is coming from someone that lost 100 pounds that definitely focuses on image. Okay, I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I focus on image, but I am kind of glad that maybe we can start making the shift towards actually the cardiometabolic negatives of having high levels of visceral fat because I do think it's more important to focus on that. Look at that visceral adipose tissue and that vis VSR, that visceral to subcutaneous ratio, more so than just someone's BMI and are they overweight or not. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Make sure you're doing your part to keep up to snuff with your visceral fat levels. I'll see you tomorrow.